Tonight on News 3 at 6, the Milwaukee Brewers playing game two of the National League Championship today in Milwaukee. We've got a score update straight ahead and a chance of snow. Dave Caulfield has a cold forecast ahead plus a chance of showers. News 3 at 6 starts right now. This is News 3 at 6. Good evening and thanks for watching News 3 at 6. I'm Amanda Quintana. Let's start right away with an update from Miller Park where the Milwaukee Brewers are playing the L.A. Dodgers in Game 2 of the National League Championship Series. The Brewers are currently losing to the Dodgers. It, it is the bottom of the eighth and it is 4-3 to three right now. We will check back later on in the show. The Wisconsin Badgers are also preparing for a big game tonight against Michigan. News 3 Sports Director Jay Wilson is in Ann Arbor with more. A lot of college football teams have trouble winning road games, but not the Wisconsin Badger football team. In fact, the Badgers have won their last 10 true road games, but the last road loss was here in the land of Harbaugh in October of 2016. Michigan will have its usual crowd of over 107,000 fans tonight in the place they call the Big House. So is it intimidating for a visiting team to play here? Well, the Badgers say it is. But that's okay too. It's a very, you feel how big the stadium is. You feel how many people are there for sure. But, um, you know, we, I think we've played in hostile environments before. And uh, if you ask me, it's more fun than anything. It's huge and there's a bunch of people and you're playing a good team. But, I mean, not intimidating to the point to where it, it paralyzes you or anything like that. If anything, that's what makes it fun. Coming up later in sports, Paul Christ on keeping a big game like this in its proper perspective. At Michigan Stadium, Jay Wilson, News 3 Sports. We will have more from Jay coming up later in sports. All right, Dave Caulfield joins us now with a look at your first alert forecast. It has been cold. Yes, it has. Even though temperatures have recovered nicely into the upper 40s and 50s today, it really hasn't felt like it because of that breeze. But we at least have a nice sunset to look forward to. A live look in Madison on the WIC TV Skycam. That sun just going below the horizon over the last couple of minutes. So we're down to 47 degrees. The south wind at 14 miles per hour. High temperatures today, as I mentioned, in the upper 40s and 50s. So not too far off from our average for this time of year. Temperatures right now a little bit closer to the upper 40s. Still running about 10 to 15 degrees warmer compared to this time yesterday. But that breeze, even though it's out of the south, makes it feel a little bit cooler outside. Temperatures and winds over the next 12 hours will stay relatively mild overnight, especially compared to yesterday with temperatures hanging out in the 40s and then a chance of some rain showers and even a few snowflakes at times on Sunday. We'll explore that possibility in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Dave. Two women say they have renewed their faith in humanity and the justice system after a ruling earlier this week. A jury is awarding the two University of Wisconsin employees hundreds of thousands of dollars following a federal judge's ruling saying the state can't ban insurance coverage of transgender health care. The plaintiffs came to News 3 to speak with Madeline O'Neill, who is in our studio with more. Maddie. Amanda, the American Civil Liberties Union, which represented the state employees, says this is one of the first times a jury has awarded damages related to the denial of health care. The plaintiffs, a Ph.D. candidate in anthropology and an associate researcher in the Carbone Cancer Center, tell me when this all started. They never thought they'd get to this point today. I really feel like I, I'm kind of in a dream and I haven't woken up yet. It's hard to imagine a future. I didn't think I was going to make it to retirement anyway. When life's trials in the present weigh you down. I had struggled with depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts for most of my life. Since her state insurance didn't cover it, University of Wisconsin associate researcher Shannon Andrews paid for her gender affirming surgeries out of pocket, liquidating her retirement funds. This is what I need to do to get through today. I don't have time to think about the future. Whether they knew it or not, Andrews and UW PhD candidate Alina Boyden had much more in store. Not at all where I ever expected my life to end up. This time, a different kind of trial. We actually sat in a courtroom and had a jury trial. Now she's like the trans sister I didn't have growing up, so. <laughs> Andrews and Boyden became friends when working with the American Civil Liberties Union on a lawsuit against the state, claiming its policy of not covering transgender treatments such as hormone therapy and gender transition surgery was discriminatory. A federal judge ruled in their favor in September September. This week, a jury of eight had their say on if the state's actions caused enough harm for Andrews and Boyden to receive damages. 
And if it wasn't that wrong, you know, I fear that that was going to send the message to other states and to also to this state that, well, you know, go ahead and discriminate against trans people. And if you get sued later, no big. The jury awarded Andrews and Boyden $780,000. I think the jury's verdict shows people are starting to say, actually, these people are really deeply harmed if they don't get health care. These people really, really need it. It's just very healing for me personally. And I, um, I'll be thankful to those eight people for the rest of my life. A life where she's reimagining the possibilities. It feels like I can actually think about what the future might hold again. As part of those damages, Andrews received compensation for surgeries she's already received, and both she and Boyden got damages for emotional distress. We reached out to the University of Wisconsin, and they said they don't have a comment, and we haven't immediately heard back from the state. All right, thank you so much, Maddie. Coming up later on tonight, Wisconsin Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin will take on Republican candidate Leah Vukmir in a televised debate. If you want to watch the debate, you can find it right here on WISC-TV starting at 7 o'clock. The hour-long debate is being put on by the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. The two just had a debate on Monday night as well. A subsidiary of Foxconn is being fined nearly $1,200 in connection with flooding at the company's construction site caused by heavy rains in Wisconsin during the Labor Day weekend. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources says it issued the citation to the Foxconn Development Corporation because the company failed to construct a stormwater basin on the Mount Pleasant property that would have prevented runoff into the Pike River. The Taiwan Electronics Company is building a $10 billion manufacturing plant to produce display panels. Officials hope to hire as many as 13,000 people across Wisconsin. New at 6 tonight, Madison's downtown and UW campus area are busy this weekend. The Wisconsin Science Festival and Family Weekend are drawing some big crowds. Both events welcome students, families, and community members to programming ranging from tours to demonstrations. The festivals collided today at a science-oriented tour of Alumni Place. Organizers say the Science Festival and Family Weekend complement each other in unexpected ways. I think it allows us to showcase um, a different area of UW-Madison to families. I think sometimes folks are familiar with visiting to see um, athletics or other performances, and we value those areas. We also want families to know about all the great things happening throughout campus and the research and discovery that's part of this place. The Wisconsin Science Festival wraps up tomorrow in Madison and across the state. For those who have been dreaming of a new ride, Bergstrom Automotive had an opportunity to test out some new wheels for a good cause today. The Ride for the Cure event lets participants test drive cars. Each mile driven raised a dollar for the UW Carbone Cancer Center. You know, I think we all know somebody who's been touched by cancer. We've got several employees uh, who have uh, either fought or are, are fighting uh, them or their spouses. And so it's an important cause for our company. And, uh, you know, I know it's an important cause for a lot of people in the community. Participants drove the cars along a nine-mile route and could try out as many cars as they wanted. Coming up after the break, after 24 months of detention in Turkey, American pastor Andrew Brunson is back home. We have details on his meeting with President Trump.
Pastor Andrew Brunson is back in the United States after being held for two years in Turkey. He met with President Trump, who put pressure on Turkey to release him. Kenneth Craig has the latest from New York. President Trump hosted U.S. Pastor Andrew Brunson in the Oval Office at the White House. Brunson prayed with the president and thanked him for intervening on his behalf. We especially want to thank the administration. You really fought for us. Uh,